The Transparent One Encore Plus by Vanitu is a two-way powered bookshelf speaker. It features a one inch aluminum dome tweeter and a five and a quarter inch aluminum cone active driver. It also has a five and a quarter inch passive radiator on the rear of the speaker. It has a frequency response from 48 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz and a class D amplifier that can output up to 240 Watts. It includes Bluetooth 5.0, USB, optical, digital, and analog inputs. It costs $649 for the black surface finish or $699 for the cherry surface finish as I record this in January of 2024. So these are the Vanitu Transparent One Encore Plus. It's a bit of a long name, but these are very feature rich speakers. I wanna talk about that a little bit in this video, but I do wanna say thank you to Vanitu for reaching out and sending me these speakers for review. I will be sending them back, but thank you so much Vanitu. And I will put a link to the website in the description below and a link to these speakers and another pair of speakers from them in the description. So definitely go check them out. Now, like I said, these are powered bookshelf speakers, but they can also be placed on your desktop. And there's a couple different modes that you can put these speakers in to get the best out of them, whether they're placed close to a wall or on a desktop in the shelf mode, or if they're on a pair of speaker stands about two feet from the wall or so, you can put them in their flat mode and get some really good performance. But as you can see, I've got the active speaker right here because it's got all the controls on it and the passive speakers over here. They do come up with these speaker grills that you can easily just pull off because they are magnetically attached. Then you can see those beautiful drivers, the one inch tweeter up here and the five and a quarter inch active bass speaker down here. Now, the passive drivers on the back, like I said, this is the five and a quarter inch. And if you just push on that passive driver, like I'm doing right now, you can see that the active driver comes out as I'm pushing in on this passive driver because this is a sealed cabinet. So as the active driver moves in and out, the air inside is actually pushing or driving this passive driver on the back, giving you a little bit better bass performance. So that's just how that works. Now, as you can see, I've got all the connections here on the back and all of the different features, including a volume knob, a treble knob, and a bass knob. So you can control it. You can control the EQ of this speaker. There's also the main power switch over here. There is a coaxial connection here. There's an optical connection. There's a USB uh, connection here. There's also um, the sub out connection right here. And the cool thing about sub out is once you plug in the subwoofer cable and plug it into your subwoofer, um, it has two different crossover frequencies. In the shelved mode, which can be used on desktop or very close to the wall, it crosses over at 125 Hertz. So that basically means that any frequency below 125 Hertz goes to your subwoofer. But when it's in the flat mode, so it's, let's say it's sitting on a pair of speaker stands, then the crossover setting is 80 Hertz. So again, any frequency under 80 Hertz goes to your subwoofer. And with these speakers, I do recommend a subwoofer, not because they don't have good bass production, they do, but if you want nice deep bass, especially when watching movies in a room and you want some room filling bass, I would definitely add a subwoofer. But for a smaller speaker, these actually hold their own pretty well in the bass department. Now, like I said, these speakers are feature rich. I want to talk about a few right now. The first thing I want to mention is again, you have the treble and the bass control, so you can set it wherever you want. And the middle has a little notch that stops, so you know you're in the middle of the bass and treble section here. But it also comes with this remote, and this remote is fully featured. It not only has you know volume up and down, mute, and input selection, but down here at the bottom, you can hit the enable button, then you can change the treble or the base setting right here from the remote. So you're sitting on your couch and you can make changes. And I like the fact that it has the enable button because until you press this button, these buttons down here are not live. So you can't accidentally make a change with the remote that you don't want to make. Okay. But again, why I say it's feature rich is because you can actually disable this enable button if you want to using the settings on the back of the speaker. There are a lot of things you can do. The shelf and flat mode, you can change that using these settings right here on the button. You just push a button here and then you twist this this way, twist that that way, and all of a sudden you've changed its default setting. It has a sleep mode that automatically turns the speaker off after 20 minutes of no input. 
out of the box, these speakers come in stereo mode, but you can make some adjustments with the controls on the back to put both your speakers in mono mode if you so desire. They also give you the ability to totally defeat the little blue indicator light back here. At first, I thought it was a little bit bright, but just making a few adjustments back here, you can turn it on, you can turn it off, whatever you want to do. There's also a left right switch down here, which allows you to change the active or primary speaker to either your left or right speaker, depending on how close the nearest outlet is. And it does come with the interconnect cable. Now this is the 10 foot version, but they also sell a six foot version, which would work better with a desk. But if you have them you know, set up in a room, I would recommend going with the longer cable. And I like this cable uh, because it does work first of all, but it's also not super expensive. I think this is like, $45 and the six foot version is like $30. So it's not gonna you know, break the bank to have to get the other cable as well. But these two speakers do need this cable because they do not talk across any wireless spectrum. And quite frankly, it just makes for a much more solid audio signal. Like two magnets, we are drawn to each other. You just know how to push all my buttons. Just know how to push all my buttons Moved out of town and I erased your number All right, hopefully you enjoyed that audio sample and could hear the difference between these speakers and the Kanto Tux. And I decided to go with the Tux for this comparison, mainly because they're pretty similar to these in that they're both powered two-way speakers. They both have five and a quarter inch woofers down here. The Tuck doesn't have the second aft woofer, but they're both five and a quarter inch woofers and they are relatively close in price. The Tucks are like $7.99 as I record this and these are $6.49 or $6.99 depending on which version you get. So I felt like they were pretty reasonable. But one thing I did with that particular recording was I set these at the flat DSP, not the shelved DSP. Shelved is what it comes out of the box, but after listening to flat and shelved, I prefer the flat performance out of these because I found that the shelf was just a little bit too treble heavy and I didn't really like it, but the flat is a much more even sound and I just think it sounds really good. One thing I like about these speakers is they are just a little bit front heavy and that really shows up 
when you're listening to a live concert. One of my test tracks is Hotel California by the Eagles live from the forum. It's a live concert. And in the beginning of that particular song, there's a trumpeteer playing. And when I was listening to that on these speakers, I felt like I was actually sitting in the audience. Whereas with the tux, the tux was a little bit laid back in its presentation and it didn't feel as live. I also noticed that these speakers have a lot of depth to the image. And again, listening to that same song, I noticed that the crowd felt just a little bit more around me as as if I were at the concert. And speaking of depth, another track that I tried is called Winning by Pastor Mike Jr. And that song starts off with him saying, everybody around me is winning. And when he says that, there's a bit of echo to his voice. So his voice is kind of reaching out into the audience towards the person that's listening to it if you're sitting down listening to speakers like these. And I found that it was a bit more depth. It, it reached me a little bit better and I felt like I was more enveloped in the song. And then it places things left or right like you want them to be. And it just really does a Good job imaging all the way around and i was actually very very impressed now if you're sitting pretty far away from these speakers you will need to tow them in a little bit but if you're pretty close i would say within i don't know six feet or so you don't really have to tow them in i think they do a good job just reaching you and having the image locked on center when it was supposed when it's supposed to be or things moving left or right or up or down because they do such a good job imaging especially compared to the canto tux now let's talk about bass performance because as I said earlier, I think when you're watching movies, you should have a subwoofer with these speakers because they don't produce as much bass. But with music, I'm not so sure because there is a ton of bass that comes out of these speakers. And I think it has to do with this rear driver back here, just giving you just a little bit of extra bass. So if you're into bass heavy music and you just like a lot of bass, these speakers really have it. But one of the downsides of having this driver is the bass is not as tight as it could be. And I think that is because this driver back here on the back just doesn't stop as quickly as the front driver does. So the bass isn't as tight, but it's there. It is nice and deep, which is good. Now, moving into the mid range, I think the mid range is also a bit more prominent with this speaker. And I think it has to do with the fact that you've got this driver back here. So when you're comparing these speakers to something else like the Canto Tux, you're going to notice the mid range is just a little bit more there. And it's up to you whether or not you actually care about that but that is something that i noticed now moving into the treble i like this in the flat dsp like i said earlier i think it kind of tames the treble a little bit and just kind of gives you a better balance of speaker but the treble is nice in detail and nice and clean but again the mid-range is still there kind of pushing up against it so you do get a little bit of that and if you don't like as much mid-range you want to bring that down a little bit you'll probably need to probably turn the uh, bass down just a little bit in the eq setting or even turn the treble up but i think you should start off with the flat dsp and like I said, I know it comes out of the box is shelved, but I think flat actually sounds better when it comes down to the entire frequency range. All right, let's talk about movies and television for a second. Now, I had these set up on my speaker stands and I connected them to my television via an optical cable. And the reason why I did that was because these speakers do not have HDMI built in. But because I did that, I had to make sure that I kept the remote with me so that I could change the volumes because there was no HDMI ARC or anything like that. But it was fine once that uh, once I did that. So I watched the standard movies that I watched, Jurassic Park, Kong Skull Island, Ford versus Ferrari, all of those. And I have to say, these sound good. Again, there's depth to the image, there's height to the image, things are growing left and right as they're supposed to, no real issues. The only thing I found was, again, subwoofer. If you wanna play 20 hertz stuff, you're gonna need a subwoofer. These will get down to about 50 hertz, no problem. But again, anything lower than that, definitely want a subwoofer. So I don't really have any real complaints other than, quite frankly, I would like it to have HDMI. That way I could just use one remote to change the volume and everything. But otherwise, it works. So overall, I enjoyed my time listening to music and watching movies with these speakers. And honestly, that's a plus in my opinion, because if you can just sit down and just enjoy your favorite music on a pair of speakers, that's a good thing, right? Um, now, I like the way these image, I like the depth that they add, I like the way they play stuff left and right all throughout the room. I enjoy that a lot. I also like the fact that they have a lot of bass, especially when listening to music. So if you're into bass heavy music, these are going to be some fun speakers to listen to. Again, they aren't as tight as some other speakers I have heard, and I think that is due to the driver on the back, maybe not stopping as quickly as the driver on the front. I mean, it might be, you know, a tenth of a second slower or something like that. It's There's no real big difference, but it is a little bit 
different, okay? So that's the main thing that I notice when listening to these. But the good news is they give you the controls to turn the bass down, to turn the bass up, to turn the treble down, turn the treble up, and even mess with the dis different DSP settings. My recommendation is flat DSP, but you can try both and see which one you like. Now, if you want to purchase these or anything else, use those links in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely give us a thumbs up and hit that subscription button. I really appreciate your support. I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.